We like to define the Revenue Builder as CRM or Customer Relationship Management made simple. What is Customer Relationship Management? We believe it's process first and technology second. In fact, CRM has got a bit of a bad name over the last uh, 15 years or so, and particularly because uh, many large companies invested significant amounts of resources uh, in technology and they didn't get the respected results. We believe that's because the key to the whole system is process first, and that's what the Revenue Builders gives you, that system of process. In the one-to-one -one enterprise, Peppers and Rogers describes it as the mom-and-pop store experience. So as a goal, what I like to suggest that we're attempting to do is develop that kind of experience uh, with the kind of trust that was in with the mom-and-pop store. An example is uh, the husband is sent on his way home to pick up some meat. He goes into the butcher store and said, I've got to pick up some meat to take home tonight. I want to get some some lamb and some pork and some whatever. And the butcher says, oh no, your wife always buys this kind of steak and buys this kind of pork and here's the other thing she likes. He says, great, put it together. Uh, the butcher does, he pays him, takes it home, it's exactly what his wife wants, everybody wins and everybody's happy. That kind of uh, business example comes about because of the trust that's built up in that mom and pop relationship. We'd like to have as a goal all of our customers feeling that way about their dealings with our firm. Is that mom and pop experience. So that's really the goal. How do you define CRM? We define CRM as to facilitate the buying process. Now those of you that are French majors will know that the verb facile means to make easy. The term buying is framed in the customer's reference, not ours. And in process we think of terms like systems. So what we really have is a system to make it easy for our customers to deal with us. And that's the focus of the Revenue Builder and what we're trying to build in the relationships with our customers. Who needs the Revenue Builder? Who's a good fit for the Revenue Builder? These are the situations that we find commonly that we hear where there's a good fit for the Revenue Builder. It's where people want to take their business to the next level. In fact, we prefer dealing with people who are, who are successful. New business development is an ongoing challenge. Time management is an ongoing challenge. We often hear that salespeople aren't on the same page. They're working hard, but people are tending to go in different directions. Some companies have found that they basically have reactive order takers as opposed to professional salespeople, particularly after 9-11. And a big one is companies that are looking to differentiate themselves in an increasingly competitive marketplace. How is the revenue builder different from other sales training? And this is where the rubber hits the road. I call it sales training that sticks. Because the key test is, are your people still using the program that you've invested in a year and two years down the road? Because typically what happens with sales training is there's initial excitement. In fact, everybody's really pumped up and after about 30 days it starts to wane. After about 60 days, the enthusiasm has dropped dramatically. 90 days is very little being used and after six months it's almost forgotten and not being used at all. That does not give you return on investment. That does not make your investment worthwhile. The difference with the Revenue Builder is people are still using it a year and two years down the road. And why? The reasons are mainly that it's number one, it's a customer focused program. And the tools are developed by your employees themselves. And we try and refocus their view of themselves as a customer facilitator. So they've developed the programs in their own words for their own world. It's pretty hard for someone to come and say to the manager, you know, gee, my sales are off because the tools aren't working, when you can say to them, well, why didn't you change them? We empowered you to do that. Come and talk to me, talk to your fellow employees, because that's what we do when we facilitate the program, is we teach people how to build the tools and how to adapt and change them. It's the old concept that Stephen Covey likes to, to talk about teaching a man to fish instead of catching fish for him. So you teach someone to fish for a lifetime, you catch fish, you feed them for a day. With this program, you can empower your people to change and adapt the tools as they go ahead.